Okay, guys. So in this platform, we are going to consider uh, the part two of our algebraic graphs working, this time with the parabola, which is the quadratic graph. So we're going to consider uh, typical formats that we are given in our syllabus of a quadratic graph, which is referred to as the parabola. So before we continue, this uh, part that we are having is actually being sponsored by the membership. This is the request of the members of the Meso African Motives. So also, guys, do make sure that you join the membership so that this allows us to have or to create as many videos as we can, uh, as long we have uh, that part of your membership, guys, it helps us a lot. So make sure that you do join, uh, watch the video on membership that I explained on membership concept, uh, how it grows this channel, how it helps to grow the channel uh, or how it grows us as a family to create more videos for you guys who are doing entry. Uh, that is for any subject for entry that is under on African motives, we can work on that. All right. Anyways, guys, I'm not going to waste your time. The parabola, which is the quadratic graph, can or might be given in the form of y is equal to x squared plus bx plus c, which is the normal format that we are used to. The moment you think of quadratic, quad, quadratic, remember your quadratic equations, ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to, it was an equation of, like x in terms of x, we're given this is 2x squared, or maybe this is just x squared plus 5x plus 6 is equal to, it's an equation that you're given. This time you are writing no longer that zero, but you're saying y is equal to. So y is now representing that quadratic that we had before. Y is representing this. So when you say you can be given as y is equal to x squared plus 5x plus 6. That's a quadratic function. So what you just need to know, just like a straight line, you do understand, all right, this is a straight line that I'm given, you're given your Cartesian plan, and you are given the format of y is equal to mx plus c. But just knowing this, you know, that's a straight line that you're going to have. You know the format of what you're going to have at the end. It is also the same thing that you're supposed to know when dealing or working with a quadratic function, which is a parabola. You're supposed to know the moment that I'm given this quadratic function or a parabola, the shape on its own, we are expecting to have something of this nature, or it can be something of this nature, controlled by the value of A. So A is going to control or uh, is going to limit the shape. So A in this case is going to affect the shape. So A in this case affects the shape. All right, so how is this A going to affect the shape? In this condition, when you have got a smiley shape like this, it means our A is greater than zero. Whenever I'm talking about A being greater than zero, I'm talking about positive values that are there. Y is equal to 2x squared plus whatever that you're given. It's a positive value. We are going to have a smiley shape. For a negative value, which is A is less than zero, where we are talking about a negative, this shape is going to be a sad shape. So we're going to have a smiley shape there. Then we're going to have a sad shape for A is less than zero, which is a negative. So that alone, it helps you on the shape, like just to know the shape. But on the sketching part, into our Cartesian plan, what is it that we are supposed to understand or to know from this algebraic graph what is important to show what is it that is important to show uh it is very very important that whenever you are to sketch um the algebraic graph which is of the quadratic it is important that you gonna represent one of these the roots you're gonna have uh the roots which are the solutions whenever you talk of the roots these are the solutions that is we are talking about uh, the x values when y is equal to zero these are the roots so this information it is very very important very very 
useful uh, when you are to represent this. Also, they are going to talk of the turning points on a quadratic graph. They can talk of the turning points or refer uh, to the turning point. In this case, it's a quadratic graph, so we're going to talk of a turning point. A cubic function, turning points, there will be turning points. So as you can see on these two graphs that we are given here, there is a turning point as this graph is going down. There is the minimum turning point, a shape like this. It's uh, just like uh, what you can say, a C, okay? We talk of minimum values. When it is like this, you talk of a hill, a mountain. At the mountain, you talk of the maximum value of the ma uh, mountain, the peak value. So in this case, here, we're going to be talking of the maximum value. And in this case, we're going to be talking of the minimum value. So what is it about this maximum value and minimum value? That is at the turning point. The maximum value and minimum values, they are at the turning point, which can be minimum turning point or maximum turning point. And these turning points that we are talking about, boys, it's a point where you're supposed to refer this in terms of x and y. It's a turning point. So at this turning point, the value of x at the turning point, at the turning point, the value of x is going to represent what you refer to as the axis of symmetry. That is the axis of symmetry. That is the line of symmetry. The line of symmetry of the x is the one that divides your graph into two equal parts. So meaning to say whenever you are to refer or to talk of the turning point, the x that we are going to be talking about is representing the axis of symmetry. That is, we are talking of uh, the axis of uh, symmetry in that case, which can be taken from this equation from our parabola format. The value of x that I'm talking about is given by the formula minus b over 2a. That is the value of x at the turning point, at the turning point, which is also referred to as the equation, which is also referred to as the equation of the line of symmetry, the line of uh, symmetry or the axis of symmetry, the value of x, which is minus b over 2a. So by understanding that x is minus b over 2a, there is a part of derivative that we can use also there. Also, you can use the concept that uh, this is from, remember, this is from our formula, from minus b over 2a, uh, this part is from our from the format, from the formula that we are given, that format that we had. But I wanted you to understand that the same x at the turning point, uh, let me just finish about this so that we understand. The same x at the turning point can be determined from the solutions or the roots. This is a quadratic graph or an algebraic graph that uh, of a parabola that you have drawn. These are the x values, which are the solutions in our x axis these are the solutions let's say the first solution is x1 the second solution is x2 these are the roots of the equation the solutions the line of symmetry or the axis of symmetry which is the line that is dividing our graph into two equal parts passing through the turning point that is at uh the turning point there we're gonna have our x this one at this turning point, it follows that from these solutions, the value of x is equal to x1 plus x2 over 2, which is the average of the solutions where x1 and x2 are the solutions or the roots. These are the solutions or the roots of the graph. x is equal to x1 plus x2 over 2. This is the one that we are talking about here, x at the turning point. That is at the turning point, at the turning point. So at the turning point, as you can see, there are two conditions of determining the x value at the turning point. 
we can determine the x value at the turning point, which is the axis of symmetry, by minus b over 2a or x1 plus x2 over 2, which is still the axis of symmetry, the line of symmetry. So by understanding that this is the x at the turning point, it means you can determine the value of y by having the value of x. Therefore, you can determine the value of y at the turning point. So to find y at the turning point, to find uh, the value of y at the turning point. So in that case, you are going to uh, substitute uh, the x value, substitute uh, the x sim at turning point. So you're gonna substitute uh, the x value at the turning point. That is the value of x that we had at the turning point, the minus b over 2a. We substituted this into the original equation, into the original equation. So into the original function that you're given. So let's just say uh, the original function given. So if y is equal to this, whatever you substitute, it's now a point. So remember, a turning point is supposed to be given as a point x versus what? x versus y. So when you're having x, you must obtain the value of y. So the value of y, to obtain it, you must refer back to the original function here. You substitute the x value in place of x. That's it. So a turning point is very, very important to be indicated. We're going to talk about that, how to determine that turning point. So we talked of the roots or the solutions. Uh, these are simply, because when y is equal to, so these are the x values. So we are simply talking of the x intercept. There are two solutions. So these are the x intercepts. So as we do understand, whenever we talk of the x intercept, y intercept also is supposed to be considered. So the last part to be considered, there is the y intercept. So it is going to have only one y intercept, one value for the y intercept. And as we know that for the y intercept, x is supposed to be equal to zero. When x is equal to what? When x is equal to zero. Remember that part does not change. x is supposed to be equal to what? We supposed to be equal to zero or it is simply from that format, y is equal to x squared plus bx plus c. We can see that if x is equal to 0 there, y is equal to what? y is equal to c. So at uh, the y-intercept, at uh, the y-intercept, at the y-intercept, y is equal to simply a c. The value of c here that you are given, that is your y-intercept. When x is equal to zero, there is, there's nothing there. So y is simply equal to zero. So y is, y is simply equal to c. But guys, you can substitute the value of x. I'm not saying no this. If you can understand it, it's fine. So this is what is very, very important whenever we are to refer to our quadratic graph. The roots, the turning point, the y-intercept. All right, let's consider given a function and we need to sketch that graph. So I'm just gonna consider one function. Let's consider sketch. Let's say we are given uh, an example here. Sketch the graph of, so let's say we are given to sketch the graph of y is equal to x squared minus x minus six. All right, let's say this is what we are given. The first thing is to consider the format of our graph. It's a parabola, highest exponent, there is a two, and it's given in the form of y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. Squared there, followed by one, and a constant where we do not have x. This is exactly the format and we need to sketch. And as I said, what is important for us to have this graph is to obtain the roots, which are the solutions or the x-intercepts. That is the x values when y is equal to zero. 
where the graph cuts the x-axis, where the graph is going to cut the x-axis. These are the roots of the function. So we are going to consider uh, the first part. So let's consider uh, the roots of the functions or the solutions or the x-intercepts. Guys, I do not know which way that you want to consider or the factors. This is a condition where y is equal to zero. Where y is equal to zero, we're going to have a zero in this case. So it simply means zero is equal to x squared minus x minus six. A is equal to B. It simply means B is equal to A if these two are the same. So it simply means if this is equal to zero or zero is equal to this, we can also write in the way that we do understand. Just write this on the uh, other side. That's x squared minus x minus six is equal to just like what we had before. Do not change any sign there. A is equal to B, B is equal to A. There's nothing that has changed there. Just two terms to be considered. So this is it, guys. We want to determine the roots, which are the solutions or the x-intercept, as we do know that these are the x-values. So what is it that you have formed by letting y to be equal to zero, which is in the x-axis? You have formed an equation. But what type of an equation is this that you have formed? Because this is an equation that we have. That's a quadratic equation. Remember, the highest power, that's a two. So it's either you're going to use your quadratic formula to solve for x, or you can simply use your factorization method to solve for x. What you're supposed to do is to solve for x. It's an equation that you are given there. So we can consider factorization, uh, the coefficient of x squared there, that's a one. So you're just going to have two brackets, or you can use quadratic formula. So this is equal to zero. So to take note, you're going to consider that this is one, so you're going to have x and x, x times x to give us x squared. So this is it. You need to focus on negative six. You need to focus on negative six. What are the factors of negative six? But these factors of negative six must add or should add up to this negative one. So we need the products, which are the factors, just two numbers. Two numbers. You multiply the two numbers, you must obtain a negative six. There are so many numbers, negative six and one, six and negative one, negative three and two, three and negative two. So many numbers that you multiply, you obtain a negative six. But of these numbers, which part that when you add, which is the sum, you must obtain a negative one. So it's going to be a trial and error. You try and try until you have a part which is going to give you a minus one. Minus three plus two, that's a minus one. So meaning to say we are going to take our x, uh, this part, sorry, to be minus three, and this part to be a plus two as it is, which is equal to a zero. So one of these brackets is equal to zero, one of these. So what does it mean? It means x minus three must be equal to zero or the bracket of x plus two must be equal to zero. So where x is a positive three or x is going to be positive two to the other side, that will be uh, a negative two in that case. So in this case, we have got two values that we are considering. The value of x, which is a positive three and the value of x, which is a negative two as the roots, the x-intercept. This is where the graph cuts the x-axis, okay? Where the graph uh, cuts uh, the x-axis, all right? Where it crosses the x-axis. These are the values that we have just determined. All right, we still need to consider, uh, as we saw there, we've got also the axis of symmetry, y-intercept. So let's just start with the y-intercept, which is a little bit uh, direct. So guys, I'm just going to erase some of this part, guys. I just hope you understand how we took this. So we're going to consider another part, uh, which is the y-intercept. So for the y-intercept, like I said, x must be equal to zero for the y-intercept. 
So if x is equal to zero into our format that we had, remember y is equal to, all right, we, okay, this here, this one here, y is equal to this. I said at that point, we're just gonna take the, the value of c, which is negative what? Negative six. Or just substitute in place of x, you substitute what? A zero there in place of x. So y is gonna be uh, zero squared minus zero minus a six. So guys, use your calculator there y is equal to a negative six. So meaning to say, this is the y-intercept. The y-intercept, we are talking about a condition, a point where the graph, this time it cuts the y-axis, the y-intercept. So this is the condition where the graph uh, cuts the y-axis. So the, our graph is gonna cut the y-axis at what? at negative six. All right. The last part to consider is of the turning point, which I said to determine the turning point, there are two ways because what you need is to have a point and a point must have X and Y. So the only condition that we do know is the x at the turning point, which is given by the formula minus b over 2a, or the formula x is equal to x1 plus x2 over 2 at the turning point. So meaning to say a condition known at the turning point is the condition of x. Then y is going to be taken from that condition. So this is our equation here. So let's just have it, uh, the last part here which is the turning point. So we've got uh, the third part to determine the turning point. So you need also the turning point to sketch your graph. So to determine the turning point, we have got two conditions for X. X at the turning point is minus B or over 2A. That is at the turning point. At the turning point, X is minus B over 2A, or you use X is equal to X1, plus x2 over 2, where this x1 and x2, like I said, are the solutions, those roots that we are referring to, those x-intercepts. So we want to see, are we going to have the same thing? All right. Let's start with the first one. This is our equation. As we know, it was supposed to be y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. So that's 1 is representing a. There is a minus 1 representing a b and our c is negative six. So from this, we are going to substitute as it is the x at the turning point is gonna be minus b, b as we can see, that's a negative one over two times a, our a is a positive one. So that's it. So meaning to say our x is gonna be given as negative, negative, uh, that's just, just use your calculator there. So that will be one over two. Or we could have calculated the same x at the turning point by using this formula. x is equal to x1 plus x2 over two, which are the x values that we obtained here. Our solutions, remember x was three and minus two. So this is what we are going to do. We add those two solutions. So it's three plus minus two. The first solution, x1 to the second solution. So take note, the first one and the second one. Everything over what? Over a two. This still was going to give you the same value of x, which is a half. So as we can see, guys, uh, to determine uh, the x value at the turning point, that one is in your hands. Yeah. It's up to you. You are going to see that after doing derivatives, there's also another way of the derivative. The first derivative is equal to zero at the turning point. So you can also consider the first derivative. You calculate the value of x. So whatever way, but you can use minus b over 2a or this concept for now. So with these x values, what we need is the y value. Remember, it's a turning point. 
which is supposed to be x versus y at the turning point. So by substituting into the original equation the value of x, because we have the x at the turning point, so we can substitute into the original equation that we were given before so that we obtain um, the y value, which is the corresponding y value at the turning point. So from the original equation, it was y is equal to x squared minus x minus 6. So we can just substitute, that is 1 over 2 squared minus 1 over 2 in place of x minus uh, 6. So then you need to use your calculator and the simplification. All right, so this was going to give us uh, something like uh, a negative 25 over 4. So that was going to be negative 25 over 4, of which is the same as a decimal. That's negative 6,25, something like that. Negative 6,25. So we have got everything that we need in order for us to sketch our graph. We have got x-intercepts, the y-intercept, the turning point. So we can present this uh, on, a, on a graph. So in this case, I'm going to have just a sketch, guys, of what it is going to look like. So let's say uh, we've got something like, let's check my graph it is, if it is clear, because I think I used this graph. All right, it's clear. But uh, are we having all the values up to those negative six or what? Oh, let's see. Yeah, we have it. But this scale of mine is it's too far. Like if you check, guys, this, these points are too far from, from each other. But you can mark those points from your graph. Uh, it's going to be it's gonna be fine. But let me just explain this side where we just consider what we are given here. So this is it. Remember, uh, or let me just use it this way. Let me just do it this way, guys, so that I do not confuse you. Uh, we're just going to have something of this nature. Just going to have a sketch. Just want you to see how it is going to be like. One, we know the shape. Uh, remember, I said A represents the shape. So in this case, uh, A is positive. One, it's a positive value. So on that on, we can see that A is greater than zero. So you're going to have a smiley shape like this. All right. So this is it. Let's consider our Cartesian plan. So let's say we've got our values of X and Y uh, that you're given 0, 1, 2, and so on. So I'm just going to focus with the major points. X at minus 2. Uh, and at minus three, these are our x intercepts. So you be you mark those points. The y intercept is the value that is cutting or that cuts the y axis, which is the y intercept is at what? At negative six. So let's just say on your graph, your negative six is somewhere here. You mark the point at negative six. Okay. If you're using the graph, if you're just sketching, just do it like that. Then we move on to the turning point. Remember, at the turning point, we calculated the x at the turning point and also the y value at the turning point. There are two things that we have. We, remember, it's supposed to be a point. A point, you must consider what is the x there and what is the y. That is to have a complete point. All right. So in this case, we have our x. So that is going to be like this, our turning point now. The x being 0, 0,5, uh, which is a half. So that's something uh, like 0, 0,5 as to the value of y being negative 25 over 4. That is, as a decimal, it's going to be negative 6, 0,25, something like that. So as we can see, as... Uh, 0, 0,5 may be somewhere there. Negative 6,25, it's below this value here. This is negative 6. So negative 6,25 might be somewhere there. So let's say that is where we have our turning point, uh, 0, 0,5 versus negative 6,25.
it's just below negative six. So this is what you need. Then from there, we can sketch our graph. Uh, so that is it, guys. The shape also, it's a smiley shape like that. So it must pass through the negative two to the, all right, the negative two to the y-intercept, uh, then to the turning point. So this must, a turning point like this, then it must go back that way. So guys, you must have something smoother and more clearer than this. But uh, as for me, I'm just going to show you guys what you need. So that's your turning point. This one is the y-intercept. These two values, x-intercepts. So we've got the x-intercept, x-intercept. So that's our function. So there we have got the graph of uh, y is equal to, remember it was y is equal to x squared minus x minus 6. So that's it. Or just f of x. So with this information, guys, you can sketch any, any parabola. Any parabola of that format that you are given. So I want you to try as uh, many questions as, as you can. What you can consider there is still the same. So you're going to see that if it is a negative, it's just going to be the same thing, uh, being a positive and a negative. It affects the shape that you are given. All right, guys, I think from the notes that we have, guys, I can remove this because if I we have this, guys, it's going to affect uh, my presentation thereafter because these boards, they tend to just misbehave. So we had that A being uh, a positive. We can also have it with a negative sign. Let's say we are still given uh, the same part to sketch are you just going to have it with a negative y is equal to negative x squared plus x plus 6. So as, ex uh, as I explained before, the negative is simply showing us how the shape is going to be. So this one, we are going to have a set shape like that. That's for a negative. So guys, th there everything is just going to remain as it is the same way. That we had, remember, we have to calculate the roots or the solutions where y is equal to 0. If y is equal to 0, you're going to have uh, minus x squared plus x plus 6 is equal to what is equal to 0. y is equal to 0. You need to solve for x. So just avoid this having a negative. You can divide by negative 1, by negative 1, by negative 1, each and every part. So that will be x squared minus x plus and minus plus and minus. That's a minus. Uh, zero divided by any number, guys, it remains what? It remains as a zero. So as we can see, this is exactly the same equation that we solved previously. So I'm not going to talk about this, guys. Exactly the same equation. Remember, we obtained x being three or the other x was a negative two. Exactly uh, the same x values that we had. Same equation, guys. So that is going to be the same. All right. The second thing that you're going to need is the y-intercept. So as we do understand the y-intercept is on a condition where x is equal to 0. When x is equal to 0, it means y will be a positive 6. All right? There's nothing there on x. So we need to say y is going to be a positive 6. Then we will need the turning point. All right? So the third part is to determine the turning points. The turning point, actually. So the turning point, like I said, there are different conditions. You're going to use x is equal to minus b over 2a, or you're going to use x is equal to x1 plus x2 over 2. It's your choice. Your choice. Using x is equal to minus b over 2a, this is our a, the coefficient of x squared. This is our b, so we've got a, b, c. So the formula is minus b, b is 1 over 2 times a, our a is minus 1. So it means our x there is going to be 1 over 2 at the turning point, which is exactly the same value that we could have determined if you are using x1 plus x2 over 2. Our x values at the solutions, the roots, that is 3 plus minus 2 over 2, which means you're going to obtain the same x value, which is 1 over 2. With this, as you can see, it is still the same part like what we had before. The same conditions, I mean, that you're having. X1 plus this. 
with that value that you are given, you substitute now because this is the x at the turning point, 0, 0,5. So you substitute this into the original equation that we are given there. Our original equation is minus x squared, so it's going to be minus x, it's 0, 0,5, or 1 over 2, plus x, which is 0, 0,5, plus a 6, as it is in the original equation, in the original function that you are given. So that was going to give us uh, the value of y in this case, which is going to be a positive uh, 6. Uh, it is actually uh, 25 over 4. And as a decimal, that will be something like uh, 6,25. Okay, you can also write as 6 and 1 over 4 like that. So thus we have the value of y at the turning point. Remember, this is a turning point. So x, we have that. So therefore, our turning point x is there at the turning point. x is 0, 0,5. And what about y? At the turning point is 6,25. So with this information, guys, we are done with this information. Having the roots, having the y-intercept, all this and uh, this part is, is enough. So remember, our turning point, we have it. So also the shape, as we saw that, is going to be a set shape like this. So meaning to say, we can consider our sketch. So I'm just going to have a quick sketch here. Uh, the y-axis, let me just try to drop it a little bit down here because we've got more values on the y. So that is it. So you're going to consider uh, your solutions, each and every part that you are given there. Uh, remember, 3 and minus 2. X is supposed to be at minus 2, maybe somewhere there. And at positive 3, maybe it's somewhere there. Then what is important to mark is the Y-intercept at positive 6. So Y is positive 6, maybe a positive 6. According to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, your 6 might be somewhere there. Then the turning point at 0, 0,5 versus 6,25. These are positive values. 0, 0,5 somewhere there. 6,25 is above 6. So this is a point just above 6. So let's say that's our turning point, uh, which is 0, 0,5 as to 6, 0,25. So that will be our turning point. And as we saw, it's a set shape. It's a negative function. So you're going to have something like this to the turning point. So this is the y-intercept. And the y-intercept, it turns at this point. All right, guys. You are supposed to have something very clear more than this one of mine, guys. It was supposed to be very, very uh, clear. So this is our turning point. So that's it, guys. We've got the graph of y is equal to, uh, that was given as minus x squared, if you still remember, minus x squared plus x plus 6. So that's our graph. That's our graph, where there's a turning point, y-intercept, x-intercepts. So with this, we can draw like any, any presentation, any part. All you just need is to know uh, the important parts, the roots, y-intercept, turning point for any parabola that you'll be given. But as we consider this same parabola, it might be given also in different ways of presentation. Instead of being given like ax squared plus bx plus c, we can have a condition where this part of bx is not there. Part of bx is not given. Let's say we have got uh, something like this. y is equal to ax squared uh, plus c. Something like this. ax squared plus c. Or you are given a condition of y is equal to ax squared minus c. The part of bx is not there. And in, in most cases, you're just going to have this a being equal to 1. So in that case, let us just take this when a is equal to 1. In most cases, that's what you're going to be given when a is equal to 1. So it means this will be x squared plus c, or it might be given as y is equal to x squared minus c. What type of uh, a function are we talking about or are we representing in that case? And also, this can be a negative in terms of our A here. 
This can be a negative. All right, let's consider when these are positive. When this here is a positive. Remember, it's supposed to be a smiley shape like this. But in this case, this is what you're going to have. This type of uh, a function that you are going to consider, you know your intercepts, which is fine. Do the same thing. Just consider the same part. You are given, let's say, uh, let us just consider y is equal to x squared minus 9. This is a positive here. So meaning to say we are supposed to have a smiley shape like that. So if you consider this, I want you to see it's going to be just direct. All right. Let's consider the x-intercepts. The x-intercepts is on a condition where y is equal to 0, uh, which is considering the solutions, y is equal to 0. So meaning to say if y is equal to 0, we're going to have uh, a 0 in this case is equal to x squared minus 9. So you can solve for x. Take this to the other side. That's a positive 9. 9 is equal to x squared. Square root this side, square root this side. So it means x is simply going to give us two possible values. Remember, the square root of any number is plus or minus. So our x is plus 3 or a minus 3. These are the roots, the solutions. The same thing that you are supposed to consider for the y in that case. The y-intercept, it's on a condition where x is equal to 0. When x is equal to 0, what's going to happen? y is going to be a 0 squared minus 9. So y is going to be a negative 9. What about the turning points? So you're going to see for this type, because the part of bx is not indicated, the turning point is going to be also your y-intercept. For this type of a function, this y-intercept is also your turning point, this y-intercept that you are given. Your y-intercept, your y-intercept will be also your turning point. That is the condition there. Is also the turning point. Only for this format, whenever we have got this format, this format, not this one, no, not that part. But do not worry, even if you do not understand this, guys. Could just refer back how we were calculating the, the y-intercept. All right? I mean, how are you calculating the, the turning point? So the third part, the turning point. How are you calculating the turning point? Remember to calculate the turning point, you are using the concept that at the turning point, x is equal to minus b over 2a, or use that of the solutions. If you use minus b over 2a, guys, there is no minus b here. This equation is given as y is equal to x squared, meaning to say the part of x is not zero. It's like 0x like this. We do not have this, so it's a 0 there. So it means this was going to be something like x is equal to b. There is nothing there over 2 times a, which is 1. So x was going to be a 0 there. And if x is equal to 0, what happens? If x is equal to 0, y is what? Minus 9. That same value that we had there, y will be minus 9. Same condition like at the turning point where x is equal to, where x is equal to 0, at the y, uh, I mean, at the y-intercept. Even if you use the, the, the concept of the x1, this x at the turning point is given as x1 plus x2 over 2. And you're saying these are the solutions because the solutions there, uh, the roots, Plus or minus means there are two values, x, which is a 3, or x, which is a minus 3. So you add 3 and minus 3, divide by 2. Still, you're going to have a 0. The x is equal to 3 plus a minus 3 over a 2 like this. That will be a 0. So as you can see, still the same x at the turning point, x is equal to 0. So y will be a minus 9 at the turning point by substituting. So in knowing the format, now uh, gives us that uh, 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 the, the, the freedom of not doing these guys because we know the format. Then we just know if we're given this format, the C or this minus C is also your turning point given that uh, condition.
But anyways, if you do not understand, you just substitute like that. You find your x at the turning point, which is zero. You substitute back, you have got your y. So that means at the turning point, we are having a zero minus nine, which is also the y-intercept. As you can see, these two are the same. Our turning point and the y-intercept are the same. So how are we going to draw this graph? How are we going to present this sketch here? Given that the y-intercept and the x-intercept are the same. All right, we are going to have something like this. This is our x, uh, this is our y, something like this. All right, remember the x are at three and minus three. So let's say this is where we have minus three in the negative. This is where we have a positive three on the positive. The y-intercept is at minus nine. Let's say this is where we have our y-intercept at negative nine. Guys, the same turning point is also there at zero minus nine. It is the y-intercept. It is also the turning point. This, this is the same. The y-intercept and also a turning point. So, meaning to say we can sketch this graph. Remember, the, it's a smiley shape as we saw before. So we are going to have our sketch this way, passing through the minus three to the y-intercept, which is the turning point. So it must be a turning point as well. At that same point there, it's a turning point. At that same y-intercept, it's also a turning point. So that is our graph of y is equal to x squared minus nine. So it's just that we, we are no longer having that condition where the y-intercept was on its own. The turning point is different. No, but this, they're, they're the same. So whenever you have got this format, you are going to notice that is going to happen and so on and so on. So you just have to relate uh, different functions that you are given when there is a constant that you are given. So it can be, it, it can also be given with a negative. Let's say we have got uh, y is equal to negative x squared plus nine. Still the same thing, guys. This is just going to be a negative there, the shape. It's going to be a set shape like that. Where the y-intercept is what? Where the y-intercept is nine. So being the y-intercept, by just knowing that, by just knowing, guys, that the y-intercept is the value of nine, where x is equal to y is equal to nine. This is our y-intercept. We also know that our turning point is there. Our turning point will be zero nine. That is gonna, it's not gonna change. In this format, the y-intercept is your turning point. So meaning to say, what you need are the roots. You can now calculate your roots, uh, which are the solutions where y is equal to zero. If y is equal to zero, you're gonna have minus x squared plus nine. So transpose the minus so that it becomes a positive. So x squared is equal to positive nine, the square root both sides, the square root both sides. So x is plus or minus three, meaning to say x is three or x is minus three so you can also about the turning point you can also prove whatever way uh that i talked about previously you will see that you are going to obtain that same turning point so it can be something of advantage if you understand that it avoids uh wasting much time in exam calculating something that you already know but i'm not saying it's wrong i'm not saying it's wrong i'm not saying that no i'm not saying that so this is it having the x values which are the roots of our graph which is at positive and negative three so let's say this is negative three positive three the y intercept is at positive nine so let's say this one positive nine this is where also the turning point is it is the y intercept which is true it is also a turning point so remember, a negative, we're going to have a set shape like this. So by joining, we must understand that as we reach this point, we are reaching the turning point. Then we have to refer back to the x-axis, just like that. 
So this is representing two things. A turning point, y-intercept at the same time. So that's it. That's we've got the graph of y is equal to minus x squared plus 9. So this is the concept that you use to sketch any graph of this nature or of this format, a parabola of that format. Still, nothing has changed, uh, only that some other things you can take them as an advantage if you do understand them. But as you can see, nothing has changed. We still calculate the x-intercept, the x-intercepts. We are still calculating the y-intercept. We are still talking of the turning points. But if you check on this type of uh, graph still, on our quadratic graph, we might be given the graph of y is equal to ax squared. This one is no longer going to have that condition. So a, in this case, can be greater than 0. a can be less than 0. Remember, when it is greater than 0, we're talking of positive values. When it is less than, we are talking of negative values. When it is of this nature, it is no longer, guys, gonna, it is no longer going to be uh, like what we had before. This type of a graph, if you consider, let's just uh, say we've got something like this. Uh, y is equal to uh, 2x squared. Because if you can see the uh, uh, y-intercept, x intercept, when x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0. So we can't even obtain anything like the y-intercept. You can't if the x-intercept, there's nothing like that. We can't determine those. So what we just need is to know the shape of the graph, how it is going to be like this type of a graph, how it is going to be like. So it is, as we saw that when x is 0, y is equal to 0. So this graph is going to pass through. I mean, it is going to be at this zero here. And at that same point is zero, it is the turning point as well at that point zero. It's the solution. It's also a turning point. So depending with the value of A, for A being positive, this is going to be a smiley shape. A being negative, this is going to be a set shape. So meaning to say we are going to have our graph symmetrical about the y-x is going to be the y-axis is going to be the line of symmetry like this. The y-axis is going to divide this graph into two equal parts. The, the, this y-axis is the line of symmetry. It's going to be the axis of symmetry. In that case, your y-axis will be the axis of symmetry, dividing your graph into two equal parts. So when it is a negative now, so this is on a condition where it suppose maybe this is y is equal to x squared. When it is a negative, it is just going to be on the other side with a set shape. Remember, a negative must have a set shape at the turning point. It goes back. So this will be the graph of y is equal to minus x squared, something of that nature. So it will depend, whatever that you're given, guys, maybe you're given two graphs to, you're given two graphs that you are comparing. You're given two graphs that you are comparing. The graph of y is equal to x squared, let's say it's like this. You are going to see that the bigger the value that we are having here, the bigger that value is how close our graph is going to be to the y-axis. So if now I'm given a graph of y is equal to 2x squared, it's going to be closer to the y-axis inside like this. So this is the graph of y is equal to 2x squared. All right, I want you to be careful. If it was a fraction, y is equal to half x squared, comparing it to the graph of y is equal to x squared, the half there is going to be far away. The fraction, is that's how far away from the y-axis. So this one is much far away to the, uh, from the y-axis, but still maintaining the same shape as the previous case, still maintaining the same, same shape, but it's going to be wide open for a fraction. So this is the graph of y is equal to a half x squared compared to the one of y is equal to x squared. So it's the same thing if you are given to draw the graph of y is equal to minus half x squared. You just compare it to that of y is equal to minus x squared. This one is going to be wide open from the y-axis, we're going to have our graph wide open like this from the y-axis. It's going to be away 
wide open like this. So this will be the graph of y is equal to minus half x squared compared to that of minus x squared. So if it was like this, y is equal to minus 3x squared, just like what we saw on the graph of y is equal to x squared, it's now, it's the, the, the bigger the number, like the whole number, that's closer to the y-axis. So it's going to be closer to the y-axis. So that's y is equal to minus 3x squared. So you can compare whatever graph that you need uh, from that part. The closer... Uh, to the y-axis, that's being bigger as a whole number. The fractions, the fractions, they will be away from that uh, y-axis concept that we are given. So that's a parabola. Different formats that we can be given uh, in terms of our, our, our parabola that we're given before. But let's say because we are mostly given these as y is equal to this, y is equal to, those are the most cases that you are given. Okay, what I'm trying to say, you are given y is equal to x squared, y is equal to 2x squared. These are the most formats that you're given. But I want you to consider that. What if I make x the subject, introduce here, the square root, square root x is equal to plus or minus the square root of y. What type of a graph is that? It's still a parabola because for a square, I'm going to go back to this part. So it's still a parabola. It's still a parabola that we are given there. If you square this, you're going to go back to the original question that you had. Okay, which is fine. But what if now it's not like that format of x being square root of, it's, it's y which is affected. It's y which is the square root of a number, square root of x, square root of 2x, square root of 3x. What's going to, what, what is it that you're going to do here? Okay. I want you to see, guys, this is a simple graph that you are given there. The square root simply gives us that we have got two possible values, plus or minus. Square root of n number, that's plus or minus. So you can even consider the, the way I want you to, to just get the mind of it. The mind, was we are sketching here, guys. We are not drawing something that is exact. We are sketching. The mind of it. Just consider to say, let's say you are substituting values. You're going to see that when you substitute an x value, which is a zero, y is going to be plus or minus, which is a zero. You substitute a 4, y is going to be plus or minus 2, the square root of 4. A 9, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 5, plus or minus the same number, but considered as a plus or minus in terms of the y. For any value of x, for any, any value of x that you are going to substitute, y is going to give us the same, but having different signs. If it is at 1, it will be plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 4, plus... So I you using the concept. So meaning to say this graph is just going to be like this. You're having two corresponding values where there is a positive and a negative passing through the zero like that. That is the graph of y is equal to square root of x. So even if it was square root of 3x, square root of 2x is just going to be the same square root of 2x, square root of 3x, same shape. Remember, you are sketching. What is important is just going to pass that zero. It's not going to pass, actually. It's just going to have a, a turning point at what? At zero. All right. So there are different formats. Formats of presenting this, which is still uh, the same way. They can give us in terms of x. x is equal to y squared. What does it mean? By introducing the square root, the square root here, it means the square root of x is equal to y. So y is equal to plus or minus the square root of x, which is that square. So as you can see, we are still talking of the same graph. So they try to, to, to manipulate that, guys. They want you to, to be, like, what, what type of an equation is this? So if I'm given x is equal to maybe, uh, let's say we have got something like 4y squared, like that. Just going to divide by 4 by 4 like this. So meaning to say, 
y squared is equal to x over 4. The square root, the square root. y is equal to the square root of n number, that's plus or minus the square root of x over 4. Guys, for any value that we have here, y is going to be taken as positive, plus or minus, plus or minus, I mean plus or minus. For any x value, we do not have square root of negative values. So we're going to have same shape going that way. We're going to have the same shape. Same shape that we had. But look the presentation they are giving you. So manipulate it in the way that you do understand. So y is equal to square root of anything, guys. It is just going to be the shape that we are seeing going uh, the other way. But we must, we might also wonder what if it is given like uh, x is equal to minus y squared. All right, x is equal to minus y squared. What is going to happen here? We are going to consider the negative there. The x is affected for the negative values of y. So what's going to happen with the y? All right. In making this the subject, you're going to think of dividing by negative 1 like this. Then you obtain something like y squared is equal to negative x. And determining the square root of the square root, we actually do know that the square root of a negative number does not exist. Square root of a negative number does not exist. We cannot obtain the square root of a negative number. So it means for all the x values that are this side, this is your x and y, that's a 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. Minus 1, uh, minus 1, minus 2, and so on. By substituting these values on this side here, this side, we are not going to obtain anything. Because it will be like this. Let's say you substitute, I want you to see first. Let's say you substitute a 2 or a minus 1 y is equal to minus square root, oh, sorry, uh, y is equal to the square root of minus, let's say you choose 2, minus 2. The square root of minus 2 does not exist. That's a math error, does not exist. You choose a 4, y is equal to the square root of minus 4, does not exist also. So it means for all these values, this side of x, there is nothing that we are going to obtain, which is opposing the previous case when y was equal to the square root of x. We were not taking anything in the negative because we do not have the square root of a negative. We're just focusing with a zero like zero and so on. The negative, we're not having minus x, we can't determine. So that's why in the previous case, when you are given the graph of y is equal to the square root of x like this, the shape was going to be like this for y is equal to the square root of x. But for the square root of minus x, substituting x values that are on the positive, we will not result in any y value. So to, to have the y value, you must take the x on the left side. I want you to see something. When x is minus 1, y is going to be the square root of minus x is minus 1. So it will be minus 1 like this. Minus, minus, that's a positive. So it's square root of 1, which is plus or minus 1. You move on to a 4, uh, minus 4, I mean, minus 4, minus, minus, that's a plus. So that's square root of 4, plus or minus 2. So as you can see, this time, because of the negative that is inside here, our x values, they are supposed to be taken on the x side, on the negative side like this. Your function is going to be on this side. So that is the graph of x is equal to minus y squared. Or the graph of y is equal to the square root of minus x. It's one and the same thing. One and the same thing that we had before. What exactly are you given? You must consider that. So they will try to confuse you like I said before. They will try to confuse you. The next part, they will need you to determine the equation. So you're going to talk about that in another class. How are you going to determine? the equation of a parabola. This was just to sketch a parabola, whatever uh, function that you're given as long as it's going to give us a parabola at the end. So by knowing 
this part, be prepared how to find an equation of a graph, how to find the equation of that same parabola. They were just sketching. They will ask you to determine, to find the equation. So watch out for that class. Uh, make sure that you do yourself a favor, subscribe to the channel so that you do not miss any classes. Like I said, you also help us by joining the membership so that we do create as many videos as we can for your entry. Uh, if you join membership, it gives us as much strength as we can to work on your uh, upcoming exams. That's it, guys, from Maison African Motives. Till we meet again.